Hello, happy new year, and welcome to season five, episode one of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And today I'm gonna do some fabric painting because I feel like it. And also I had a lot of people comment or ask questions about fiber art recently. So I thought huh, it's the perfect start of 2024. Also some news for those of you who have been wanting me to hit the road again. I am attending a show in New Mexico uh, the first weekend of February and I am trying to get into the Phoenix show but somebody has to cancel in order for me to do that. So one of the things that that will help you do fabric painting is having a light tablet and this is my Ultra. You don't need one this big though. You can go ahead and get a smaller one. Like This is the little glow. And know that they're going to be in stock this month. Right now they're still sold out. We're waiting. But I know they are starting to ship the glass tablets So, and some of the totes. Uh, if you order a set of items, then you'll receive them all at once. If you just order the glass, you'll get the glass. Well, what is the glass? The glass is what you see right here. And this particular one lost its little foot in the move, so it's wobbly. So don't worry, yours won't be like that. If you don't want all these lines on it, you can take a razor blade and scrape off the lines on the back, which I plan to do because I don't need the lines on here. I can have a lined mat behind it. So what this does for you is it makes it so that you can use wet items like ink and paint right on top of the glass so that you can take your project that you want to paint and put it beneath the glass and then lay your fabric over the top and just paint right on top of that. See how I can't see it? You just turn on the light and then the image shows through. However, what I'm going to do today is a little bit different because I didn't have time to fully prepare. I had a... I only got here about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> so, and I, I still didn't know what I exactly I was going to do. Hi, Wendy from the Adirondacks. Do you, how many of you have snow? Say snow and we are having a little snow today. We didn't get as much as I would have liked yesterday. Hi Teresa. And we have two Windies today. Windy Harper. Wait a minute. Do we have three Windies? And hi Amy. And Crazy Crafting from Oregon. I can't remember your name, but know that I appreciate you all showing up without any notice. I didn't get to send out a newsletter or anything letting you know. I have my phones vibrating now, but oh, there it is. Let me make sure that this one is not on the Wi-Fi. Good. Just in case I do something like forget that I didn't in the feed. I'm going to be giving the VIPs the pattern for this. Should you want to paint this particular project? So that will be in the school. This is a really washed out example of it. I don't know why this is so far over. Let me see if I can't move.
that looks a little washed out. But if you want, you can also paint what I'm going to paint today, which is something I found on... Let's see if I can sh figure out how to share my desktop real quick here. awfully far away from me. There it is. Okay. If you go to you, Etsy.com, you'll see pretty pretty bones graphics and that is where I got this is only a dollar 18 so definitely affordable and I do like to always support fellow artists so they don't get cheated out of the money that they deserve for creating something so lovely as this let's see what this camera is Isn't it pretty? I thought it was pretty. Now what I really would have liked to have done is to print this right on our stick and tear. And stick and tear is the stabilizer that has the frog on it and we use it for embroidery. Since I can, as long as you guys are willing, to see how I would go about doing it. I take the stabilizer and I'm going to roll it backwards to get this curve out of the paper. something like this and you want to do it but you don't feel qualified to do the whole thing well you don't have to do it all and you can leave out part of it I have painted or created a sewing machine I just couldn't find it so now I've kind of flattened this out and I'm going to tape it to the paper and I want the sewing machine to be pointing this way and this is going to be on the back so I'm going to flip it over and tape it onto the paper this way it really doesn't what you're trying to do is make sure that you print let me move that light tablet out of the way so if you don't have a light tablet you can also print right on our stabilizer in color and the stabilizer is recommended for putting on back of your fabric to keep the ink from going through the fabric. And you really only need a piece big enough for the design. So it's okay to have to cut the stabilizer so that it is within the boundaries of the piece of paper. And the tricky part is getting your printer to, to say, all right, I'll I'll allow you to stick that inside and run it. These are a couple things. If you want to learn how I did this, this is a, an entire project that I did inside of the my YouTube channel. And then this one as well. And a cup. I just absolutely love these little notebooks. I think there were some of you that did that and the kind of fabric that I like to ink on is a off-white not muslin but a really high quality cotton I use the Kona cotton fabrics I'm trying to find my paper pen, paper scissors I think I took them all this pair needs to be sharpened I don't know why I gathered up all my paper scissors and took them somewhere. Hmm. 
We are stalled right now on the pressers because my lathe, I, sh I knew I shouldn't have tried running it yesterday while it was in freezing temperatures, but I did. So it will print on the soft surface of the stick and tear. And this will be then put on the fabric and that's the way we want to paint it. It's kind of like applique. You know how when you do, do a letter E, if you print the letter E and, and you don't plan ahead, you'll end up with the E being the wrong way. And I need to get this secured well onto the paper. So what I'm going to do is just for a moment while I tape this using tape, I'll give you these to look at and you guys can chat, perhaps pick up that pattern so that you can paint along with me. And I will be right back. Also, I'd love for you to help me figure out what to make out of this project, which I have quilted. This is another YouTube video that I did. This is a bookmark. Ah, this shouldn't take me long. I tried to have this ready. Tape, where are you? There you are. is to have no issue with it going through your printer. There we go. I'm working from the other side of the table. This is the first. And you might get tempted to tape all the way along the edges, but you shouldn't need it. And wherever you, you put tape, you won't get any ink. This would be a, an instance when you wouldn't want to use, to have a lot of paper in your tray. When I do something like this, I generally will have just one piece of paper in there and pray <laughs> the whole time. And I will go all the way across the leading edge because you don't want it to get caught as it goes through the wheels. Whoops. Oh, goodness. I'm not used to having these, a sweater on and it's catching on everything. Trying to get it to lay as flat as possible before putting it in the printer. A tote bag, Amy? Words everywhere. Got to make sure I don't unplug a camera. I'm wearing big furry boots too. So you put it in your tray upside down like that. fingers. 
it's a lot to expect of this. Please, printer angels, we're going to need something to ink in. I have, I like to use old to go containers or uh, TV dinner trays. You can also use ink or I put it in the wrong way. See, I didn't print the right way. I want to print, I want to put it in with this side up. But hey, it took it. And printing first is a good idea so that you know you've covered up the area that you're going to be printing. And here we go. All right, one more successful printing. Please, 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 please. <laughs> These are some of the inks that I'll be using today. We have textile paints. And then we have the Lemures. And I had a successful printing. Yay, yay. It's a good day when things go right like that. Oh, goodness. Last time it was much better. I got emails out and everything. Okay. We also have paintbrushes on creativefeet.com under the supplies link. How many have you seen this video, this tutorial, you guys? If you have, uh, say, heart, or you can give me a heart. Do you want to ink on the right side of the fabric? And it's a good idea to wash. And do not use fabric softener when you wash it and then dry it so that it shrinks. And it gets all the sizing out of the fabric. Hello, welcome Roxanne. So this is a fantastic embroidery stabilizer that I've stitched or printed on. And you can also do this for free motion embroidery with the Octi hoops. Should you want to do your own embroidery like I did with the flounder over here. So you can print right on the stick and tear and then have it show through your fabric and embroider through it. So the color will be showing through the fabric. If your fabric is thin enough, you can also print on our cover up stabilizer, which is the vinyl. And that's how I did the butterfly right here. I actually, on the butterfly, I printed on the hold light stabilizer by sticking it onto a piece of paper just like this and running it through the printer. And the hold light is the wonderful stabilizer that we use for the rubber husband and for backing embroidery. So you can actually back your fabric with this, making it water tight. 
and then stick this onto the back, which is what I should do. But I have a cardboard here that I'm going to use to protect my surface. So step one, iron this to the back. Wash and dry your fabric with no softener. Iron the hold light to the back of the fabric to make it waterproof. Then stick our stick and tear to the back of that and then you can ink right on a surface on top of your light tablets. But I still would put some kind of plastic over the light tablet just so you don't ruin your pad. This one I printed on our cover up, which is the vinyl that we use for embroidery on towels, which stops the terry cloth loops from showing through. You can see how nice the coverage is on that towel. And this was all free motion. Another video for you to look for inside of the Fabrically Speaking Live or or was this one of the VIP private videos? I don't remember. Do any of you remember? And know that this pattern I did give in the VIP group for embroidering on towels, should you want to do that for this upcoming Easter. I really want to do the right thing. I'm going to heat up my iron and do the right thing. I'll show you the right way to do it. Why not? Another thing you can use the glass, the tempered glass for is to iron directly on top of it. Whenever we iron with the hold light, we don't use steam. So I'm going to turn off the steam on my iron. And I don't know what I'm going to make out of this. So I don't want to cut it really small. I'm thinking this, this painting will deserve to be on something, perhaps a tote for carrying to the shows. I'm not going to go back to doing tons of shows because I simply cannot. But right for right now, I have one scheduled and in, if you're ever wondering about the shows and events, because we also have the Creative Feed Extensive that's launching on the 15th of January, which is an online course inside of Create with Claire Rowley, then what you want to do is, I'm trying to get to my program. There it is. Okay, now. Minimize you. There we go. Go back to my desktop. This is all a little tricky on my brain, especially for the first episode of 2024. I don't know about you, but I'm like, good riddance, 2023. Are you guys ready for a um, better, more positive year? Okay, so back to where you can find the pattern of the sewing machine that I'm doing now is in the chat, so you can click on it. And I will have it in the description below the video after today's session. Uh, this is the website, creativefeet.com. Under products, you'll find different listings and you'll find the paintbrushes under supplies and notions, but shows and events right here. And this is how crowded it gets at a show with me. And here's link where you can learn more and generally they have discount coupons and stuff when you click on the link from our site. So right now that that's scheduled. Then you have the create with Claire Rowley. This is the school and this was today's announcement of the video that I'm in right now. If you're in the school and you chat, I don't see your chat till after. It's always better to be inside of the chat on YouTube, which I need to get out of this because that can make me crash. Let's see, save and get out of here. Cancel, save, and yikes. Back in the day, I would have already crashed. So I just searched sewing machines with flowers and got all these different images that came up and uh, brought it into Adobe Illustrator and then print, made sure it fit on the paper. 
and then printed it out after purchasing it from her site. So you want to make sure that you support her. I gotta close this too. There's a couple things I had open I should not have had open. All right, phew, all right. The iron is hot. And just so you can see that you can iron on the glass. You're not gonna get as nice of an iron if you don't put a cloth on here. I'm going to center it, I think. Let's see. Hold light. Where are you? Ah. Just used it. I'm also going to be next week teaching a new bowl cozy. So if you loved the bowl cozy, but you'd like an even better one, that's coming. And I will be using the rubber husband for that or the rubber shelf liner for that. Come on, hold light, where are you? Oh, I remember what I had to do last time. I had to cut some real quick. And it's right handy so here we go again sorry for not being totally ready I know I can drive some people crazy when I'm live to make it a little bit more manageable as well I, I am going to cut this fabric down a bit Before inking or painting on fabric, you can submerge your fabric in wet or diluted paint or ink to get the fabric to be a specific color, which is what I did on the sunflower. This is the whole light. It has a cellophane appearance, but it really is a magical product that serves you really well for this. And this is the wrong side of the fabric up, as I can see the crease where my fabric was iron or how my fabric came off the bolt. don't need this much. Let's see how well it irons just on the glass. And sorry for not having this more centered. I'll just slide you over. I have the iron on a hot setting. I, I don't need it that hot. It's um, hold light, which doesn't require a high temperature. And you don't want the matte side facing the iron. You want the shiny side facing the iron. Make sure there's no dog hair or thread. Oh, goodness. Anything that could affect the movement of the brush you want to make sure is not beneath or between the hold light and the fabric. I'll tell you what, if I had this when I was younger and I did fabric painting, it would have saved a lot of things from getting paint on it that shouldn't have. So 
see I'm just ironing right over my cutter pillar safely because I'm ironing on the tempered glass which is designed to not shatter and I just left the iron sitting there I recommend getting two of them and having one with lines and one without Okay, we do want to make sure that it's secured all the way around as well. That you don't have any pockets where it's bubbly. Would have been a good idea to iron the fabric first. So with that said, I'm going to take this quilted fabric and lay it down beneath this. So it has more of an ironing board texture and spray it with some water and let's see if we can't get this to be perfectly smooth. It's also a really good idea to know if you're straight. So to fold your fabric and have a center point on it. And then fold it again. Now I have a X marks the center. And you can see all the ink on my glass from before, and I also have ink on my or paint <laughs> on my mat. One mat's for art, the other is for everything else that I do. Now, I inadvertently printed this the wrong way. Oh, goodness, I really did. No, I didn't. I did it right. This is the shiny side of the stabilizer. This is the release liner. I'll peel this off. And you're going to stick it to the hold light on the back and try to, it would be a good idea to make sure you're straight. And now that is on the back. Oh, I did do it wrong. I did it wrong. This should be fa facing that way. Can I peel it off? How to overcome this? Print it again. I'm just gonna leave that on there though and just, because I have the ability, I'm just gonna start painting. Remember, you can look through the glass and trace. Hmm, now I gotta take it off. All right, you can start teasing me now. It's it's a a discombobulated thought process, that's for sure. I will overcome. No one's going to give me a hard time. I'm going to add a coupon for the ink or the fabric paint today. After the show's over, I'll I'll create a coupon called paint all uppercase P-A-I-N-T. For anyone who doesn't have the inks yet, I keep calling them ink and paint, not trying to confuse you, but we do have both fabric ink and fabric paint. 
And both of them you paint with. What's the fastest way for me to overcome this so I don't have to print it again? The wonderful hold light. That's how. I got to think it through, though. So I want it to be on this side. I want the iron. It's not even, no messing around here. I want it to be like this when I'm painting. This side goes to the iron. Yeah, that should do it. Uh -huh. It's always good to know how to get out of a sticky situation. Except for... There we go. I almost undid what I did. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Let's see if it's still hot enough to bond it. Yay! So now you know you have an endless supply of designs that you can ink with. This is just the iron still cooling down. The iron is off. Probably as warm as a silk setting. And now it's facing the correct way. And I can paint right over the top side of my cutter pillar. Yay. You ready for some fun? Wish everything wasn't so dirty. You guys see that okay? There are also other options for you, available to you, and that is using a marker that irons away. You can also use Sharpie markers and color over your fabric before inking it or before painting it. You want to know if you can paint on bridal satin? I happen to have a piece right here. We will play around with that as well today. It's a terrible cut, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to be using this for the inside of a uh, of my iPad case. So we'll just do a little tester. I don't like how it feels a little wrinkly, so I am going to turn the iron on and put it on a cotton setting. See, I have a little bit of a ripple right here from when I peeled it off. Those of you in the VIP, I'll be sending out an email probably the first part of next week. And it isn't constantly live, but I will be having live videos with each section of the course. And the first section of the course is going to be on the satin edge foot. And we're also going to do needles and thread. So needle and thread fabric, needle, thread, and fabric theory and understanding the science of it. And writing a corresponding book to go along with the course so yep yep come on get hot 
If you're not familiar with what I'm speaking of, it is inside of createwithclairerowley.com. It was delayed because my father passed away, my dog passed away. I then had to move and I also got COVID. I don't know if you guys know that. So the last year was a really, really rough year for me. And now I'm good to go and ready to start. Okay, nice and flat. Can't wait to make this into something exciting. Makes me think of summer. Get you out of the way so I don't make a mess. Yeah, it was a rough year for me. I'm so glad that I, I am on the other side of it. Thank you. To make it easier on yourself, you, you can secure this to the glass so that you don't slip it while you're working. But see how convenient it is to adhere it to the fabric? Now the fabric can't slip off of the design. You need some water, and I usually have th four jars of water, but I moved all my art supplies to my home, and I have been painting, and will start doing little sample videos on here and the full video for my other channel, which is launching this year. This is the top of a baby spinach container. This is a great little thing to put ink in and mix it up and you can't get it wet, but it's also great just to put your wet stuff on top of along with a paper towel. I generally have paper towels laying down for laying my paint brushes on. And I only put paintbrushes in a jar. I made this jar for my mom's 80th birthday. This was a fun little project to do. So sometimes people put their brushes in their cup like that, but it flattens out and flares the end of the brush and damages the tip. So better to wet and clean your brush and then set it down in between uses. And I'll use the brushes we offer at Creative Feet so that you know which ones I'm using. But no, I do have hundreds of brushes. I did used to paint 40 to 100 paintings a day as a reproduction artist in another life. Where's the, I know there's four brushes. Where's this? Let's see what I'm looking for. Oh yeah, the short flat. Here it is. And these brushes are really good for use on, with oil and acrylic and water color. So you don't have to have a variety of different brushes for those mediums and also fabric painting. If you if you don't have a light tablet, you can use your window to trace designs on. And I know some people put lights like this beneath a glass. So, just know that there's free shipping on the light tablets at creativefeet.com and they are arriving any day. So for those of you who've been waiting for them for a while, I know that's exciting news. As some people have been waiting months for these to come. I got lo a lot of these sets. This is a set of little baskets I bought at Walmart. 
and they've made a really nice little paintbrush storage. Okie dokie. But I always feel a lot more comfortable if my paint or my water is in something that it can't tip over in, especially when I'm live. When I'm live, I'm a little bit more loopy. All right, I don't know how far I'm gonna get on this, but can't think of a better way to spend the day with you, especially a snowy day. You might fall asleep, Amy. Are you are you well, or are you, did you get sick again? I hope you didn't get sick again. I tend to put people to sleep when I paint. I have been told that. The light, the cord for my light keeps on plugging, so I'm going to tape it and show you what I'm doing if I can without having this fall off my table. Ah, that's so far. Oh, let's see. I'm going to have to move it this way. So what I do is, because it's, it's, it's pretty easy to pull this cord out. So I take some tape and wrap it around. And then I use the tape and secure it beneath the board when it's plugged in. And now that's in there and it, it won't, it won't come loose as I'm painting. But you probably won't have as, have as much trouble with that as I do because I'm in this confined space. If I knew where my razor blades were, I'd scrape that paint off right now so you guys could see how I do that. And I won't forget to do a little bit of the bridal fabric. Step one, you need to understand that when you work with fabric, it's similar to watercolor. You can never get your white to come back or you can but just know that that white is stickier so you can paint all you want on a garment but if you want to embroider through it or quilt through it then you need to be mindful of how thick you apply it and also you don't want a uh, real thick feeling we have the lumineers which would be great for bridal because it has a metallic-y, very, very fine metallic-y uh, substance in it and definitely want to shake it really well. I haven't used any of these inks for probably a year, so they're all going to need to be stirred. We also have had issues with companies going out of business where I bought supplies from. I think this might be a really good perspective from for you just having the top view. And I don't need all the cameras I usually use. I also need to be able to rest my elbows. I have the heater on. I can turn that off by my phone. Let me do that now. Okay, now I'm not gonna overheat. These are the softer inks. The Fabric Creations. And we had an issue with the, the gentleman that, try not to get emotional. The gentleman that I was buying these from for years, he was on a ladder and he fell off the ladder and we really, we don't know, we don't know his condition, but he's no longer selling it. And then I had to get approved by the manufacturer to buy directly from them, which they have now done. So we can start restocking our colors of that. And I really love the fabric creations. I love them all. But the fabric creations 
are a bit softer than the rest. See, I just turned off, but that time I tapped it. The cord's still plugged in. Okay. I've not painted this design before, so I'm going through the process in my mind, what I, the best method for this. First off, you should be wearing something that doesn't allow you to get your clothing dirty. And I love this sweater, and I don't have anything here to prevent me from ruining it. I used to have my studio in my home, so I could, I was, it was easier. But now that I have to drive somewhere, I'm having a little bit more difficulty with it. Let's see if I, how the top tight is. Is that gonna be good? enough or should we also have that other camera too close that one's way off i'm gonna have several different camera angles for you this will be another one that'll be nice Except for my arms got to stop touching that. I wonder what I can do for that. I can also use regular old paper plates as a good option for mixing. Looking at the design, I also would like to have the design to look at. What do I do with it? The other paper I printed. Did I carry it off? So I recommend having it not just on the fabric but also having a piece of paper beside you with the printed out design. I can print from here. Let's see. I'll print another one. Come on. Thank you. I don't like wasting ink. It'd be nice to have a, a magnifier that I, where I didn't have to wear these glasses. Wouldn't that be cool? But. If you do need glasses, you should be wearing them. I'm gonna grab the printout real quick. It's, oh, there it is on the floor. Never mind. I don't have to walk away. So you can see even though you have it between be, below this, I think I may have to change the position of this. That even though you can see that, you can't see it as well as you can from this piece of paper. So having the paper reference beside you is a good idea. And this is a double printing. So really it's more subtle on there. I want to think about where the white colors are and try not to overly saturate those areas. And also I look at things and I go, how, what is the furthest thing away in this image? And I, I'm going to outline the, the overall shape of the sewing machine. To make it less likely to have a problem, I can use a, a iron away marker. I don't need to do that though, because I can really see well through that. I think I'm going to just go straight with the paintbrush. This is a absolutely beautiful ink. See how it has that metallic look? I know where my tray is, where I have lots of, let me get this tray. Um, 
front screen top. I'll be one minute, not even that long. A second, no, nope, a little bit longer than a second. You're not going to just be easy, are you? Nope. Never mind. I thought I had something I don't have. Just get going, Claire, and quit your messing around. All right. Here we go. Wish I had some music for you to play or listen to while I'm doing this. Control, so I'm going to use a pointed, and this is the oh my eyes, so number four round. And it's a good idea to shake this, and you can also stir it. I tend to leave these on so that I don't end up with them drying out as easy. Sometimes I also will just take what I need, and you don't need a lot. And dilute it. Oh, another thing I use the hold light for, which I forgot to do. Is that I iron the hold light everywhere I'm not painting. So I would cut a, a window for the painting and have all this other area be covered with the water, with the watertight stabilizer. And that's the product on the back side here. Got to put my glasses on. Oh, Amy, I'm so sorry. Notice that I, I place my hand on the light tablet so that I'm not unstable. <laughs> Making sure that I don't put this where any area is just gonna be white or any color lighter than that. Did you have guests for Christmas? If you did, how many guests did you have? Now in this design, you can see there's a lighter area here. So having white ready. Now this is not just any white. This is highlight blue. So this is really not white. However, it is a lighter shade than, than that. And I should tell you the numbers of these. This is number 571 pearlescent turquoise. And this is number 576 highlight blue. And it has this really pretty look to it. I'm hard to try to get you to see it. Well, you can't see it as well as I can here, but and then I'll take some off. I have a palette knife for this, but I think my palette knife's at home. I will generally generally use a palette knife to get the get inks on the plate. And now I can take this and mix over here to make lighter shades of it. I think you can see on my hand how it's how it has a blueish tint to it or a 
it's not just white. But now you can see it's a lighter shade than that. Now I can blend it out. Another thing that I do and I don't have here is I wet my fabric first when I want to blend. I usually have a spray bottle and I spray my fabric so that it's wet to start. So you don't get any so you don't get any strong lines like you see here. Sorry for having that in front of you. Thought I had the different camera angle selected. Goodness gracious, I gotta cover that with something. So see now I have that strong line there and I don't want that. I didn't want that. Can I zoom in on that? Let's see. That's close tight. You want top close. Trying to pick a camera angle for you that works better. Top tight. Is that better? I don't think I'm going to get away with not using white on this because it's not wet to start. So in this case, I would generally get the white first and I am going to use a white white. So this is super opaque white, number 220 in the textile colors. And what that is, what the word opaque means is it is it has good coverage. It'll block out things. You have translucent, which is kind of a see-through, and then you have opaque, which is a really good color or type of paint for blocking or covering. Say you have a stain on your fabric and you want to remove a stain. Here's my thing. Oh, I know what happened. I don't have my normal workflow going on here. Here we go. So this is a plastic table with the paper towel on it. Now I have something to set this stuff on. And I should take the time to add water to these. And periodically I will do that. I'll add water to my paints and stir them up because over time they will dry up. Because water just wants to evaporate. I tap and spin and pull the brush toward me and leave the other paint behind. I'm going to dilute that a little bit. Tapping, trying to keep the paint at the end of the brush spinning. It'll be interesting to see the the website or YouTube try to figure out what I'm saying. I'm a mess already. <laughs> Have you ever painted and not gotten dirty? Are you one of those neat and tidy painters? So I'm referring to this and I'm going to go wherever there is a really dramatic light and make it with the white paint. This will prevent me from covering it up. It kind of blocks it. At this point, there's no way I'm finishing this in two hours. Would you guys like me to finish this in the VIP for this month? 
That way Amy can go to sleep. So basically it's just tracing. Isn't that cool? You can keep your hand from... I'm going to try something. I keep turning this on. I wonder if I put something over it like this. If I if I can put my arm down. Ha! Huh, that works. I guess it has to do with heat. Body heat. Did you guys go out on New Year's Eve and ring in the new year? And this is January 4th of 2024. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, Go ahead and hit that like button at any time on the outside of the live chat if you're here on January 4th. So this kind of gives you a little bit more comfort in knowing that you, you can't really block or damage that white area now. It's really hard for the other colors to go in there. Somebody's outside in the parking lot revving a motorcycle right now. If you're hearing something weird. That's what it sounds like anyway. Sounds like a motorcycle. Stayed home safe. I got together with a small group of friends and we, we danced and had a really good time. Bunch of adults acting like teenagers. And we had a light or a sound therapy session, which was really quite beautiful. It's a retreat center up here. And it is a place that I can rent. So it is something I'm considering. Notice that I am coming out of hibernation. So did any of you get something really, really cool for Christmas that you want to share with everybody? I can't believe they're out there revving that engine. <laughs> Do you hear the engine revving or am I just, should I ignore it? Okay, the rest are flowers. And now I'm going to go ahead and next time bring my spray bottle. Or get another one for here. There we go. It's nice to work with it really thin. Oh, thank God they left. Okay. Well, hopefully they're not having car trouble. Periodically, I'll turn this off to get an idea of what it's looking like. So you can see where I've placed the white. And now that is kind of like a block. But to really block this, to prevent this from occurring, you can see how the the teal color is going out. We use a product. Where is it? 
the liquid based glue. And this is what I should have done before I even started. And just go all the way around the perimeter of the sewing machine where there's fine or lines that want to be maintained. And this will dry and block the ink from leaking or spreading on the fabric. You can also use this kind of like a wax for silk and let's play around with this really quick because I promised. So we'll, I'll make a, a little daisy on this bridal satin. And this is a really high quality bridal satin. And this is a water soluble stabilizer that's wet. And when it dries, it's just on the surface of the fabric. I have tested this before and it does work. In fact, it's what I used on the uh, heart book I just had in my hand. So weird how things disappear and I haven't even gone anywhere. Oh well. coming up along the inner line of the sewing machine. This is available under supplies, under products and supplies at creativefeet.com, liquid-based. It also lets you pin things without pinning. Now around the flowers, you could probably let it blend out, depending on what you want it to look like when you're finished. But in this area, this is supposed to be metal, so it's not supposed to have anything. And that would take a little while to dry. You could blow dry it with a blow dryer to make it go dry quicker. And I think it'll be pretty to blend out the colors around the sewing machine itself. But the sewing machine itself needs to have a strong line. If I don't finish this in here, I'll, I'm thinking I might go live with the whole school as a zoom. Maybe finish this as a zoom where you guys can come in and speak with your voices inside of createwithclairerowley.com. I know that Claire is, there's no I in my name. There we go. So you don't want to put this anywhere where you want the ink, the paint to actually go onto the fabric because this is going to block it. Still need a little right here. Did I get it? It's hard to see because it's clear. It's fantastic for zippers, isn't it? Yeah. And if you want to do a wedding veil on, uh, and you want to have it shaped, a particular shape, you can draw on it with this and then cut through it after it's dry and it'll stop the fabric from stretching. There we go. I've left some broken areas so you can see and we'll let that dry. Oh, I didn't let you see. Okay, so now I have the flowered outline of on the bridal satin, waiting for that to dry before we move forward. 
and I'm going to continue working here. And I have this really far from me. It may not look like it on the camera. Let me put some more water right here. It's always a little tricky having a sewing room or a studio where you sew for be where you paint. Just grabbed some more of that color and made a mess of my brush. I'm going to thin it out. I usually just paint without tracing, but I know that not all of you are able to do that. So I like to show you a way that you can make it do something really fantastic. And have a blow dryer handy. I do, but it's very loud to dry things in between. Now I'm going to blend the ink on the fabric, which is a lot easier if the fabric is damp. Still not have, I haven't let that liquid base dry yet. Um, okay, now I'm, what should I make this into? Leaving room for the leaves? What should I use this for, you guys? It's such a pretty design. And if you want this design, the link is in the chat and will be in the description after the live is over. It's only $1.18 to have access to this design from a artist on Etsy And I did mention her at the beginning. I can't remember the name. I do struggle with name recognition. Refer to the actual printed design periodically. And I had it way out of my line of sight. Try to make it so you can see it, but. And the bed of the machine is teal. See, I almost forgot to paint the machine. A color used frequently for shadows is purples. And this is kind of like a, a darker area that she added hints or tones of purple in there. So I'm going to need a, a little bit of that. I could use blue and red together to make purples, but you'd have to plan ahead for that, wouldn't I have had to really sit down and think about all the colors and it looks as though she she used blues darker blue to create the shadow of the underbelly of the machine and this is what makes your design become three-dimensional is using different levels or shades of colors and adding in different hues now the back of this paper is dirty i gotta set it aside so I don't get it on my fabric. And then I'll look at the chat here, see if anyone's saying anything. 
Partly why my hand is steady is that I put my hand down. So it it seems as though I'm just painting, but I'm not. I'm I have my pinky down. And I also have my elbows down. So if you paint and you have your hand in the air and you go like this, you're it's going to be much more challenging. And in that instance, frequently I will do this if I go up to a a canvas to paint and I also have used a stick and have it go into my waist and brace my arm as I paint so I can get right up on a canvas and do a little dot in the pupil of an eye on a face so I'm not as steady as you may think and my hands are this hand is hurt right now still injured so I still don't have full range of motion and movement in my thumb and remember, nobody knows what it's supposed to look like but you. And everyone's going to be just like looking at the overall art, not at the one spot you messed up. Like on here, there's a whole bunch of areas that are embarrassing if you were to look closely at it. And this is something that I'm still quilting through. Maybe I'll do a little quilting with it soon. Not today, because I don't even have a sewing machine on my table today. Kind of weird looking for me, huh? I was going to set up the other camera. However, I think this is a good camera angle. You like this camera angle? You know, I can see it better on the camera than I can in front of me. Oh, I needed this. There's something about painting that just really takes me into a nice space. And I will be doing more art, as I said. I have another Claire Rowley YouTube channel for other things besides sewing so that I can keep the sewing part separate from the art part. And I will be having little mini courses on art inside of Create with Claire Rowley. Some of these will be fee based as I do have to stay in business. Can't do everything for free. Got a little bit of the liquid base on my finger because I'm putting my finger down to give me the stability to stay steady and also I'm using just the very tip of this brush and making sure I don't have too much on the brush there's a little fleck of something there get off there don't worry about it Okay, so I, I want this to be shadowed like the image here has that darker color there and oh, I love that color. It's like a phthalo blue. Here's some blue we can mix and this one looks like it will be really nice and this is 585. Is this 585? They're both 585. I really like that color apparently. Or is this one brand new? I think this is brand new. Somehow it got in my kit. So Indigo 547 will be great for under here to make it look shadowy. And then the 585 will go up here. And as before, you should be shaking these. Over here you can see these are, this is definitely purples. So I need to look for a purple. Here's a purple, a good one. Grape 546 in the Lemures. These are all sparkly-ish, which I was going for. And this is another turquoise, and this is in the textile. So this one will be more opaque and block stuff. Block stuff. There's a technical term. And I definitely need to get all my paints wet and mix them up.
let's use this other camera. I'm not dreamy. Let's see. Blink. I just love that color. That is really nice. This is what you call a messy palette. I'm not worrying about my colors mixing together. And if you plan ahead and just go, I'm going to not I'm not going to be all tight and make sure everything's perfect. Plan and decide that. And then you won't be as stressed out when you're painting. And I'm just going to waste some paint, which I don't normally do. Only because I don't want to get my shirt dirty, which I forgot to bring my smock. Actually, I use a men's dress shirt as a painting shirt. A nice thin one, it's not too hot. Now we have the 585 and this is the color I initially started with, which was the pearlescent turquoise, which is 571 and 585. You probably should put your lids back on. Oh, this one's dry. There we go, I got it. You can see why I keep that. I also would, it's not a bad idea to get some cellophane and put some cellophane over that and then put your lids back on. Plastic bags. It's a messy, messy, messy art day for Claire. I was talking to myself, talking about myself in the third person. There we go, some nail art. Okie dokie then. Now, are we painting ourselves or the canvas? <laughs> Oh, I wish I brought my, I took too much stuff home, so I don't have a palette knife here. And some of the artwork I'll be doing at my home, in my little studio that I've created for painting. And probably doing voiceover afterward instead of being live like this. We'll see. Still feeling it out, figuring out what you guys really want from me and what I'm capable of doing. Back to this. So now I'm going to go ahead and still stay focused on this color on the teals. Making sure I don't have too much on my brush. And very, very tip of the brush again. And I'm I'm going to continue outlining now. This isn't the darkest that the color will be. Notice that I, I move like that. I don't go back and forth. So a very light touch on the very tip of the brush. Slow movement, moving away. You get a finer tip that way. And now I can go ahead and outline these flowers a little bit. This will be kind of a shadowy effect. And it, I'd like it to be more wet, but it's easy to get it into the green areas. And it's going to be what it is. This is 
a different kind of medium or different kind of uh, item to paint on. Much easier though to paint on fabric when it is secured to our stick and tear and our hold light stabilizers. If you've ever done fabric painting before, you probably had a really hard time getting the fabric, getting the ink to not spread out. So if you're, if you weren't here be when I started, you wouldn't have seen, you haven't seen how I prepared the fabric and know that you can always rewind after the light is over. And I'm trying my best to look periodically at the chat, but got to keep my eyes on the paint. Keeping my eye also focused on this, that I can't keep in this in the shot. The uh, the liquid base is still drying and it got stuck to the bottom of the paper. So now I have to keep the paper off the fabric. Another way to get yourself to not be stressed out is to just, before you ever begin, just make some dots. So now we have an element of design on the fabric. So I'm just doing little splatters and a variety of different thicknesses of the paint. And no one will know if you get a drop somewhere. I haven't done any fabric painting where I haven't done that because of how easy it is for it to spread on the design or on the fabric. Now I can see better on my piece of paper. And this is really dark in here, so it's time to bring in the darker blue. And eventually the purple, which I haven't put on the palette yet. The less water, the more intense the color is. And if you want a softer, you want it to be really soft, then you want to get the fabric wet. The stick and tear stabilizer beneath it has the ink, the colors that you're seeing are on our stabilizer itself. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get affected by the water. I'm gonna come back in with some purple here too. So what I'm doing is creating this dark, these dark areas on the image. These won't be blue, these will be more like a purple, dark purple. I'm blocking it in. This is the worst working conditions. Do yourself a favor and make sure you've got a nice clear area And I'm going to go across here with a, that's going to be a lighter color. <laughs> Time to bring the purple in, but I don't want to get the, the brush dirty. And speaking of dirty, dirty palette, having this color run through everything will keep a tonal, uh, similar tonalness to all the colors. So frequently I will do that. I will have this color go into the green and not a lot, but some. This is where it's going to be really dark. So start to bring some more in here. A 
what do you have on your sewing table? Are you starting to sew already after the new year? And keep in mind, I'm always wanting to know what you want to learn. There isn't much I haven't done on sewing for sure. And art wise, art wise as well. Want to peek at it without the light? Something I would do anyway. Where's the? Now I can't turn it off. There we go. So now that's that's what is already done. So it been is it bendy? Did you use my octi hoops? when you sewed without a foot or were you doing it without it and then that shouldn't have damaged your machine i'm a mechanic uh, we can talk if you need me to like talk to you on the phone it's really hard to break a sewing machine first off a permanent destruction of a sewing machine is nearly impossible unless you have a car accident and the sewing machine's in your car and it goes flying across the car or you get rear-ended or you drop it off of a really high table onto a hard floor. It's really, really hard to break, to permanently break a sewing machine. The octahubes will make it so much better, so much easier because the fabric isn't being held by anything with our octi hoops you are your fabric is held that's why you don't need a foot because the octi hoops behave like a foot and if you don't know what an octi hoop is yet there's lots of videos in the in my channel and it's a hoop system that I created so everyone could do free motion really well It is so much fun. It's one of my favorite things to do is use the octi hoops. There's so little I don't enjoy that's creative. Now metal reflects the color that's near it. So we want to make sure that we have some of this color running up that and also around all these metal components here. But she does use purple for this. I'm going to grab that dark blue. You can see how little you need of the inks it's, or the paint. It's just a very small amount. Little tiny touches. You can even do just a dot a dot, a dot, a dot, and then connect those dots. So far I have not switched brushes. This would be the most used brush for details for me, which is the number four. And these are brushes that we had a set made for us. The octa hoops are so much fun. There we go. Around this. Sorry that you can't see the design I am painting. I don't want it to get the fabric dirty, and I could have, should have, sealed the paint, sealed the fabric all the way around with the same stabilizer that's on the bottom, keeping it waterproof, which is our hold light. So this is, I guess, her way of showing the, the difference in the bed of the machine or just artistic in, interpretation of a sewing machine. Perhaps there was something in the room and she was looking at a sewing machine when she was painting it that cast a shadow that was a straight line. But see, it's really not that 
crucial that you do exactly what's on here because it's art. It's not, you're not being tested. You should be thinking about really just enjoying yourself, getting that little kid in you going. The little child needs to play more this year, I say, I say, I say, that if you guys want to play with me, I am going to give you lots of creative things to do. I sounded like a cartoon character, didn't I? So this is where there's a leaf here, and the leaf has lines going through it. And there's nothing wrong with getting the blue in there because colors kind of reflect one another. Here's another leaf here that I want to not lose. And then the flower's edge. And I'm going to go into the flower to have a really fine point in there around and in. Give you guys a peek again at what I'm doing. A lot of work. There's no way I can get it all done today. And I'm a messy mess. This is a messy palette. That's what I call it. So the colors kind of blend together. And we're going to take this, even though the flowers are not blue, and do the outlining Under here is some other area that is supposed to be metal. <laughs> Another dark shadow area here. Anybody have any questions while I'm enjoying myself here. <laughs> Are you doing any type of creative project right now while, while watching? Anyone, any of you knit or anything like that? Crochet or needlepoint? Share with me. Tell me what you're doing. So we got some darker color over here. And I want to have generally if you, if I'm the one painting my first discussion that I have with myself is where is the light coming from is it coming from over here is it coming from over here is it front facing light because that is important if you want dimension if you want things to look like you can grab them, they need to have a shadow. It looks like she had the light coming from over here. And as I've stated before, if you want colors to blend better in the, on the fabric, use water on your fabric before applying any ink, any of the paint or ink. And I'm mentioning paint and ink because we have both at creativefeet.com. Both are water soluble. So you use them the same way.
And what's keeping this from, from bleeding out is the liquid-based glue that I put around the border before I started. You can see applying more than one coat is gradually making it get darker and we'll go ahead and peek again so you can see what it's looking like and what it will look like when we're finished. Bye Bindi. Don't hesitate to reach out to me about your sewing machine. Okay, I'm going to bring in a little purple, I think it's time. Maybe not, not yet, almost. I don't want to have to worry about the brush. Make this strong line here. And I am also holding my arm as I do this fine line so that my arm is steady. And my, and my forearm is laying on the fabric. Giving a fine point, trying to have it be as pointy as possible and just using the very tip. Notice I don't talk while I do that. It's kind of like taking a photograph and you want to hold steady and hold your breath when doing fine lines. Not all the time. There are also some colored pencils that you can use that after you paint, then you spray the fabric that you might enjoy playing with. This will be recorded, so you will be able to play it back. Probably like me to move along huh, and do a flower. Notice I, I keep myself quiet on some of the things. So what I'm probably going to do is finish this off live and upload this as a, a video on my channel. So you can see me finish it, but it will be edited. Hoping that my lathe doesn't need a new motor. These are the screw holes, I believe, that she's drawn here. So they just need to be like little circular. Doesn't have to be full detail. Bead dogs, throat plate, and it's going to be more detailed with the purple color coming in. Go ahead and take a peek and I recommend you do that as you paint that you stop and you look and compare and the color on here is more like what you see here 
Actually, no, it's not. It's This is definitely more blue than that. And I want to add more green. I want that. I like the way this looks. <laughs> she was very good at designing this. Don't you think? Are you having a good time? It is four o'clock. <laughs> I'll go another 15 minutes. And then I'm going to stop because the worst thing you can do is paint when you're tired. If you start to feel sore and the area gets stiff and you keep painting, you're apt to mess up and then you'll just be mad at yourself. So I'll do the, I'll do the purple parts and then finish as I said. I'll do some of the purple and then I'm going to end. For those of you who are not familiar with me, a lot of what I do is live, but I also have recorded videos, and the live videos might drive you crazy because they're slower going. I just keep turning my light off. I don't want to waste any of this. Oh, I was going to test the bridal fabric. Let me do that as well. Don't want to disappoint. Trying to think of what to put on the bridal fabric. Just a tiny bit is all you need. And I am going to open all my bottles and put water in them and mix them all up because mine are getting dry. So if you bought them and you haven't been using them, make sure you check that yours are not also getting dried out. See, now it's getting more depth. Painting really well has a lot to do with how much time you put into the shadowing, the shading. Similar to embroidery, when you do free motion embroidery. If we do just one color thread, we don't get as much definition. I'm going to take this purple and bring it down on the metal parts because she did. Not really sure how detailed she has this foot. And go across to create even more shadow. I could paint it as a creative foot. If the light is coming from here, we would have shadows over here. What do you think, you guys? Starting to look more dimensional. It's beautiful. Thank you, Teresa. So this is definitely a purple area. So I'm not gonna waste any of this. I'm getting tired, so I'm getting quiet. But 
but I really want to just keep on going. I can't wait to share with the artist that I did this little video. And in the description, you'll be able to buy this pattern should you want to make it. It's only a dollar something. Under two dollars for this pattern that you can then print out and use with knowing you've supported the artist. And that's as of January 4th, 2024. And I would read her rules because sometimes you have to pay more if you want to profit. Like if you were to paint this and then sell the item. Drawing just lines for that. We'll go ahead and check it again. We'll check it against this so you can see we're going to be coming in with some pink hues and pull out some of those colors. And I'm, oh no, I. <laughs> the bridal fabric got into the paint. Well, that's one way of testing whether or not the bridal fabric can get ink on it. So, I say that this is this just keeps drawing attention to itself. So let's paint a little bit on this. Protect this area. I'm going to place it on this and then get it out of the way, I guess. Okay, we've got bridal satin. Now this is the highest quality bridal satin you can buy. And whether or not the ink would stay after washings is is what I'm not sure of. But you shouldn't be throwing a wedding dress into a washing machine either. It paints beautifully, actually. And what you see on there that I'm painting within is our liquid based glue that I use in place of pins. You can also use it to block the fabric. So this is a relatively wet, relatively wet paint. And it's able to be wet and not spread. So if I were to do this out here where there isn't anything, put a drop you'll watch this drop will actually spread. Well, it should anyway. That may take a little while. Yeah, that's, that's actually taking to the satin really nice. It'd be better if I had more colors to play with. <laughs> so for those of you waiting on pressers, I'm going to try again tomorrow. I think the weather's supposed to be a little bit warmer. We had a freeze going on and my motor just wouldn't go. So 
you can also just paint you know you don't have to work with in flow lines like that The thicker your ink or paint, the less likely it is to bleed. I'm not sure if the if whoever it was wanted to know about the bridal fabric got to see that or not. So, you know, I'm just gonna, just gonna keep going for a little while, but I, because I can't waste the ink. <laughs> but my, I pulled the cord out of the light tablet, so let me get it back in. Trying so hard not to ruin my outfit. <laughs> I don't want to stop. I'm an artist. There are some of my paintings, which you, right now you can see some on clairerowley.com, but they're all going to be up there very soon. And some I've spent over 200 hours painting. Those paintings also were done in oil. So that's why I'm launching the other channel so I can teach you art. Need more water. Definitely a spray bottle is better than what I'm doing here. This has got stuff that will get my fabric dirty, making sure it doesn't, and then I can put it down to use again. I got something down here that needs purple. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's some little dials that. And just something. We got another one here. I didn't bring that much purple out. And I'm being bad. This is not how I normally do it. I would normally use a palette knife. This is a good way to make dots though, use the back side of a paintbrush and you can do perfect little circles. I know one of you does rock art, so using different brushes that you do for rock art, you can do that on fabric as well. You can also use a lot of the watercoloring watercolor techniques, including ice, laying ice cubes down to create interesting blends and salt. sure what I'm seeing but if you just are tracing you don't have to analyze it right you guys ready to give this a try tell me what you think chat 
they like to know that you're having fun. So this has a center that comes out. My sinuses are a little bit off today. Apologize for my sniffling. More dark here. Got real dark over here. My pinky is down, supporting my hands. Well, that was a long, quiet moment, but you can see I am quiet when I'm doing a really detailed area. And you don't have to go all the way down. You can do little strokes. This isn't the one stroke method. This is, this is painting. This is Very, very soothing, especially if you've had a rough day. We're supposed to play more in 2024. So even though this is a number four, I was able to draw those teeny weeny little lines. Can't believe I just said teeny weeny. Teeny tiny is what I meant to say. <laughs> All right. I think I'm going to stop here and finish this up. When I'm not live, because it's a few more hours of painting for sure. And what I do when I clean my brush, this actually you want to see how it bled though. So you can see that dot spread out past the dot. Got a lot bigger, didn't it? And these all stayed within the confines of the liquid based glue. The areas where it broke out was where I didn't have the line solid. So you want to make sure you do a solid line if you want to hold the ink in in a con and then afterwards you get this you get this wet and it will the ink or the uh, liquid based glue will dissolve and you'll just be left with the ink and the fabric What do you guys think? It's starting to look detailed. And this is a double printing. I printed it twice, which might not be a bad idea, actually, to help you see even more through the fabric. Let's see. Yeah. Most definitely. I'll show you the top view. Top view. So I can definitely see the colors a lot better where I have two 
different color or two different prints. So all I did was you just take the paper, put it in your printer, print it once, then put it back in the printer and have it print again right over the same spot for a more intense printing. But this is printed on our stick and tear stabilizer. Stick and tear is stuck to the fabric and I printed it by adhering it to a piece of paper and then this, the hold light is holding it all together and the hold light is waterproof so you don't have to worry about the ink going anywhere other than where you want to draw. And if you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you've been watching live, make sure that you hit the like button after you've left. And to learn more and to stay more connected with everybody in the chat and, and myself, go ahead and join createwithclairerowley.com, which is in the description of the video after it's over with, which is ending now. And I will be putting a coupon in the school or inside of creative feet called paint all uppercase P A I N T, which will give you a uh, extra 15% off of all the inks at creativefeet.com for the next 48 hours. So go ahead and order your ink or your paints and you'll find them under the supplies link at creativefeet.com. And now let's see, what am I supposed to do? Because every week I'm trying to end all smooth and I, I rearranged my buttons and I messed it up, so. That's what I need to do. Is that what I need to do? I think that's what I need to do. <laughs> Love you all. See you next week every Thursday. Now, wait, not in February though. And if I get the show, if I get a, I get into the show in January in Phoenix, I will also be uh, not available on that Thursday as well. So if I'm not available, I will generally tell you the week before that I'm not going to be live. Like I wasn't live last Thursday. And I really did take a long week of rest, which was much needed and much appreciated for you guys supporting me and taking a vacation. And uh, I love you. Feel better, Amy. You take care of you. Bye. And uh, oh, I remember now. Eventually, I'll get this. Bye bye.